Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. We're in the news. Friends of Science thanks Elections Canada for the warning on climate change. We issued an open letter to Elections Canada a couple of weeks ago on this topic. We were glad to see that Elections Canada recognized that climate change is a partisan political issue since there is now more than one climate change perspective in the elections race. This meant that environmental charities and nonprofits would have to register as third-party advertisers if they wanted to run paid ads mentioning climate change in the election period. But that applies only to paid advertising. These groups can still use social media and talk about their views on climate change with no problem, just like any other Canadian can. Most Canadians don't realize there was a change of law this spring for charitable spending. Until this spring, federally registered charities were only allowed to spend 10% of their revenues on nonpartisan political activities. But this spring, the feds changed the law so that charities could spend 100% of their revenues on nonpartisan political activity. So what, you say? Well, think about this. Some ENGO charities have more revenues than all political parties combined. And the top 40 ENGOs in Canada definitely have partisan views on climate change, all on one side, the climate emergency side. Well, we don't. We're a nonprofit. We recognize that climate change is a complex interdisciplinary field. Our view is that the sun is the main direct and indirect driver of climate change. This image gives you an idea of the various aspects of Earth's climate that are affected by the sun. And humans only affect this one, the atmospheric concentration of gases. As well, other internal activity of Earth, like volcanoes on land and under the ocean, can have dramatic effects on climate. This study even suggests that recent warming was driven by geothermal activity. Meanwhile, solar physicists like Dr. Nir Shaviv can show how changes in the cosmic ray flux affects the formation of clouds, which in turn affects climate change. In 2013, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, issued a report stating there had been a pause in global warming for 15 years since before Kyoto, despite a huge rise in carbon dioxide concentration. And since then, carbon dioxide, CO2, has continued to rise dramatically, but temperatures have pretty much stagnated. So following this report, Dr. Judith Curry and a number of other scientists concluded that carbon dioxide is not the control knob that can fine-tune climate. That's what the evidence shows. So you probably wonder, well, then where's all these catastrophic claims coming from? Well, they come from scientists working with climate models or simulations. People who share our view have been very critical of these simulations because they're making projections far, far hotter than real temperatures. Look at this. The Canadian climate model runs hottest of all. You're a taxpayer. You're basically paying for a climate model that's scaring the world to death, but that doesn't reflect reality. In the article about us, the spokesperson for the big environmental charity, Environmental Defense, claims a crazy space has opened up by Elections Canada. And the David Suzuki Foundation spokesman claims their freedom of speech is being stifled and that we, friends of science, don't want science to be part of the debate. <laughs> That's laughable. Of anything, we have consistently advocated for open civil debate on climate science and the impact of related energy policies. Many Canadian climate policies have been directly affected by foreign-funded environmental groups funded by green billionaires who want to push cap and trade, price on carbon and renewables. It is these ENGOs that want to pump millions of dollars worth of paid climate change emergency announcements into this fall's election, when in fact we should be having a serious national debate about foreign interference in our energy and climate policies and how climate policies are making Canada uncompetitive and killing our main industries. 
Robert Lyman's reports have shown over and over again there's no meeting Paris targets without destroying Canada's economy. And there's no need to meet them. Paris, COP21, is not legally binding. And if every country met the targets, there'd be no discernible drop in global warming. Furthermore, only the U.S. is close to meeting targets, and it pulled out of the Paris Agreement. And the EU is also close, but at the price of an industrial massacre. Is that what you want for Canada? We support Election Canada's ruling on charities and paid advertising on climate change, particularly because so many environmental charities have been or are funded by foreign actors working against Canada's interests. As charities law expert Mark Bloomberg notes about the charities and freedom of speech, he said, some people talk in terms of freedom of expression for charities, but it's really about money more than freedom of speech. People who work or volunteer with charities are free to express their personal views on their own time, and that can even include partisan activities. However, some want more. They want the ability to be paid using a charity's resources, which are subsidized by taxpayers, to express their political views and to not have to do any charitable activities. The 10% rule is not enough for them. They want 100%. There is a difference between free speech and heavily subsidized speech. So there's no climate emergency and there's no need for a carbon tax because the sun is the main direct and indirect driver of climate change. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. <laughs>